Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was, and the other boats were with them. A violent squall came up, and the waves were breaking over the boat, so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and the sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, and happy Father's Day again. We do, we thank God for each of you, and to my dad and Sherman, I'll see you next week. So today I want you to think about the actions of the disciples and ask yourself a question. Do I see my life as half full or half empty? You all know the saying, is the glass half full or is it half empty? In other words, is our outlook on life positive or is it negative? I personally can't remember a time when the attitudes of this world were so negative. In these last few years, the world has become increasingly cynical and pessimistic. The COVID pandemic it had a lot to do with it. It was unprecedented in the chaos that it left. But in many ways, it only intensified the underlying negativity of this world. Just look at our politics, racial tensions, violence, wars. All of this takes a terrible toll, toll on all of us. And today's gospel is simply a metaphor for our lives. We're all journeying through life going to the other side, but during the journey, we will face many storms. And in these storms, we act like the disciples. They panicked, and they were filled with terror. Jesus, wake up. We're all going to die. They could only see the negative in their situation. What if they had said, oh, it's getting bad. Let's tie everything down. Let's get ourselves safe. Hey, somebody wake up Jesus to make sure he's okay. Could that have been a response? But it wasn't. And so why do we act this way? Why do we react to our situations in the way we do? Simply put, it's referred to as the first law of spiritual energy. It's simple. Energy follows attention. Energy follows attention. What you focus on is where the energy of your mind, your heart, and your soul, and your faith goes. When we focus on what goes wrong, our energy flows in a negative direction. When we choose gratitude and appreciation, our heart, our mind, and our soul grows positive. We become more aware of God and his love. So how can we change? How can we begin to change the attention 
to refocus our energy. Peace. We heard it today. Peace. Peace is the key. Peace with ourselves and peace with God. And Jesus gave us the answer right there in the boat. Have faith and trust in knowing that I am here in the boat with you, and I will give you my peace. Bishop Barron says that the reference to being asleep means that Jesus was actually utterly at peace. He represents a divine power and an energy that is actually asleep within every one of us. And that power remains unaffected by the storms of life. The anxieties of life are very real. We all know it. But if we awaken to the presence of Christ within us, we can live in his peace. So, how do we get that peace? How do we find peace in our lives? How do we know and grow in our faith, knowing that in the midst of every storm, Jesus is there? I'll give you three things to think about and work on. First, words matter. Your words matter. Words have power. They can heal and they can tear down. They can start wars. They can stop wars. They affect everything we do in every aspect of our life. They impact our relationships, especially family members. And it's not just spoken words. Now it's social media, it's texts, it's emails. Once these words are spoken or they're sent, you can't pull them back. When they're positive, you can lift everyone's spirit. But when they're negative, you bring everybody down. And it reminds me of something that I did last Monday night. We had a holy hour for women here in the church, and I led the holy hour, and I was hot. It was hot in the church. It feels good today, but it was hot Monday night. Sorry, Chris. And when it was over, I was drenched, and I was approached by the ladies in the back in the narthex, and they wanted to tell me how beautiful the service was. And what do you think came out of my mouth first? Man, it was hot in here. I'm so sweaty. And as soon as I said it, I wanted to take it back. And I did quickly. I quickly found my composure. I regained my peace. And I said, you know what? It's hot, but God is so good. And he allowed us to have this amazing service. And the, mu the music was beautiful. That is how I really felt. But I allowed being hot, such a tiny little storm of life, to momentarily take my energy of life away. Apostle Paul wrote in the letter to the Philippians, My friends, you'll do best by filling your minds on things that are true, noble, authentic, compelling, and gracious. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. You can make a decision that is the same. You can choose your words carefully. When you do, your attention will be drawn to the good, and your energy will follow. Second, Life is actually pretty good. Do you believe it? Yes, we have storms. Sickness, loss of loved ones, loss of employment, problems in our marriages, problems with our kids. But, and when it comes to COVID, we all suffered. But when we now can see the pandemic in our rearview mirror, isn't it time to see life again? in a beautiful and new perspective? Isn't it time to see the beauty of the world and the love of our family and the love of God? Don't get stuck 
on thinking about the things that you should have done or being jealous of what others have or comparing yourself to others. These things only distract you from your peace. You can't always get what you want, but you just might find you get what you need. I encourage you to focus on what you have and what you can do. And when you do that, I think you'll see that your life is indeed quite blessed and good. Which leads me to the third and the very most important thing to know and remember. You're never alone. Sometimes it feels overwhelming. It feels like we're on our own and Jesus is asleep or not even in the boat. And in the midst of our struggles, you have to remember he's there. He's just waiting for you to call upon him. And you have to remember to call upon him not only when things are bad. Don't wait till you're desperate to try to wake him up. Seek him first always. I like to think of it in terms of a car. Is Jesus your steering wheel or your spare tire? Which is it? Do you allow him to guide and steer your life? Or is he that thing you keep in the trunk and you pull it out when you have a flat tire? Jesus will steer your life if you let him, but you have to ask. And as you think about this today, I want you to listen to this story. Usually I tell sad stories, as some of you know. This is not a sad one. It went a different direction. So there's two, there's two old farmers, one who's positive and one who's negative. So one day the sun is shining and the positive farmer says, isn't God good? This will make our crops grow strong. The negative farmer, yeah, but if it stays hot too long, they're going to wither and die. Another day, it's raining. And the positive farmer says, isn't God good? He brings the rain to water the crops. Yeah, the other farmer said, yeah, but if it rains too much, they're going to drown. Then one day, they're out by a pond, and the positive farmer has this new dog. And he says, Take a look at this trick my dog can do. So he throws a stick way out in the middle of the pond. And this dog runs on top of the water, picks up the stick, and runs back all the way on top of the water. And the positive farmer says, isn't that amazing? And the negative farmer shook his head and said, I should have known. Your dog can't even swim. <laughs> My friends, is this the way we look at life? Be honest. Honest with yourself. Think about the next time you open your mouth what you're about to say. The energy of your life follows your attention. It is a very good time for us to change our attention we need to rediscover the peace that is within us that Christ gives us. We need to share gentleness and we need to share love. And that's where our energy will go. And I say on this Father's Day to each father, you are called to maintain the spirit of love and gratitude and positivity in your family. You are the guardian you are the protector of the peace of your family. What you say and what you do alters the energy of your life and the energy of your entire family. So let us all follow the words of St. Paul to the Philippians. He wrote, live without complaining or arguing, and then you will be innocent and genuine. You will be the perfect children of God, and you will shine in the world like bright stars. 
My friends, we have to remember Jesus is in the boat. He's not sleeping. He's waiting. It's time to turn our attention to the good. Life is good. And when you do, the energy of your life will give you peace to survive the storms. Choose to remember only the best and forget the rest. Then you too can shine like a bright star in this world.